Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And today I have brought uh, one of the most demanded topics uh, in uh, physics that is uh, uh, pseudo forces and rotating frames that is Coriolis force, Euler force, centrifugal force. So I have pre uh, uh, pre uh, made a presentation on all these pseudo forces and I am sure we are going to understand all of it. Uh, these uh, concepts are fairly complicated and uh, most of the times the proofs of uh, these uh, results are not uh, provided especially the Coriolis force in uh, general uh, case is not provided and uh, even I am going to teach this for the very first time but I am sure that uh, you will be able to understand if you follow me very carefully throughout this video so stay tuned till end and uh, let me tell you in advance that uh, it's a fairly complicated uh, video there's a lot of equations but i if, but if you uh, pay careful attention to every equation that i write uh, you will be able to understand everything and uh, uh, i would suggest that you keep your pen and paper ready so that uh, when you see an equation you can copy it down if you want uh, for better understanding and uh, unless you understand an equation don't move to the next equation and uh, uh, I'll hold your hand through the throughout the video and uh, the concept will be yours to keep forever. So uh, without much ado, let me straight away get into the explanation of uh, the pseudo forces and rotating frames. So let's see. Okay. So, okay. So I've divided it into several concepts. So the first concept that we need to understand for understanding all these pseudo forces is first concept is rate of change of a rotating vector. So let us say I have some vector B, okay, which is welded to some rotating axis. Let us say this is uh, this vertical thing is a rotating axis. It is rotating with some angular velocity uh, capital omega. Okay, so it's rotating with cap capital omega. So obviously if the vector B is welded to this axis, the vector B will uh, uh, be uh, changing with time as far as uh, its location from the ground frame is concerned, you see vector b is somewhere over here and after some time dt the vector b is somewhere over here and the change in vector b is the final vector uh, that uh, the line joining the initial vector to the final vector so this is the change in vector b as seen from the ground now uh, it's important to understand that even though vector b is changing from the ground frame from the rotating frame the vector b is still fixed why because suppose i call this direction as i cap so as my frame has rotated, the entire frame has rotated, still this this is in the I cap direction. So in the rotating frame, the vector B is fixed, but from the ground frame, the vector B has changed and this is the change in vector B. Okay. And now I'll try to relate the change in vector B with this uh, angular velocity of the frame capital omega and the uh, uh, length of this uh, vector B. Okay. So uh, let me read it out. So rate of change of relate. Uh, uh, rotating vector let a frame rotate with angular velocity omega vector and let b be a fixed vector in this rotating frame let b be inclined at an angle alpha with the axis of rotation so this is the uh, axis and this angle is alpha okay now from the ground frame we can clearly see that change in vector b is b sin alpha into omega dt now uh, how is that see uh, this is your vector b and you drop a perpendicular on the axis so this angle is 90 degree and this is b and this is alpha so the radius of this circle on which the tip of the vector b is moving the radius of this circle is nothing but b sin alpha right so this is the radius of the circle that is b sin alpha and you know that uh, the arc length and the chord length for very small angles are same so and this angle is uh, capital omega dt so this is capital omega dt uh, angle and the radius is b sin alpha so this length becomes simply b sin alpha into omega dt right so this is the magnitude of change in vector b now what about the direction you can clearly see that uh, this direction is nothing but omega cross b vector see omega vector is upward and b vector is this and you can see that the change in vector b is uh, perpendicular to the plane containing the omega vector and the b vector itself right because it's along the tangent of the circle whereas uh, the initial vector b and the vertical they are uh, uh, they are forming this plane and this obviously is perpendicular to the this uh, radius right so radius is in this plane and the change in vector is perpendicular to the radius right so can i also express it in terms of cross product so you see whenever you see b omega and sin alpha you are tempted to write it as a cross product unfortunately yes 
we can see very clearly that uh, we can readily write this uh, change in vector b db vector as capital omega cross b dt so you can uh, focus on this figure and you can see convince yourself uh, using right hand thumb rule that if you take the cross product of this vector and this vector it indeed points out in this direction so capital omega cross b vector is in this direction and of course magnitude is b sin alpha omega dt right so that's our change in uh, b vector in a time dt so what about the rate of change so you just divide this by dt so db by dt is nothing but omega cross b so this is the rate of change of uh, uh, vector b from the ground frame even though in the rotating frame vector b is not changing at all right and this is an important thing that i'll be using uh, later on for developing our theory further so i hope you understood this make sure you understand this concept before moving on so that you stay motivated to uh, get through the rest of the mathematics so uh, this part is important and it's going to repeat over and over so make sure you understand this rate of change of a rotating vector right so uh, this vector is fixed in the rotating frame but it is changing from the ground frame and this is the rate of change of this vector okay so if this is clear then we'll move on to the second concept right so what is the second concept so don't be uh, intimidated by this figure uh, this uh, figure does indeed look uh, very intimidating but uh, just uh, listen to me carefully and you'll be able to understand this this figure is going to be our friend uh, for next few minutes okay so uh, don't worry about this complicated figure i'll explain everything just listen to me very very carefully okay so this concept is relation in rates of change of a vector in rotating frame and translating frame so uh, in the previous case our vector b was fixed in rotating frame it was not changing uh, in rotating frame it was fixed but it need not be fixed vector in rotating frame a vector can also change even in the rotating frame so we can talk about rate of change of vector b uh, in rotating frame frame we can talk about the rate of change of vector b in uh, inertial frame and what is the relation between the two rates of change so that's what we are going to uh, find out here right so now uh, here there are two coordinate systems one is capital x capital y and capital z this is a fixed coordinate system right so capital x capital y and capital z they are fixed coordinate uh, axis they are not rotating right and there are uh, small x small y and small z axis uh, which uh, have the same origin as the uh, the coordinate system capital x capital y capital z so origin of both the coordinate systems is coinciding however the difference is that small x small y small z this coordinate system is rotating about this uh, axis with an angular velocity omega so you can say that y axis will be going somewhere on that circle right and similarly x axis will be going somewhere on that circle and z axis will also be going on somewhere on that circle right because the whole axis uh, uh, this small x small y small z frame is rotating with an angular velocity capital omega that's shown in green about this the small x small y small z is rotating okay so let me read out so let o capital x capital y capital z be a fixed frame and o small x small y small z be a rotating frame rotating with an angular velocity capital omega vector and let q of t be a time varying vector and we wish to relate the rate of change of q vector in rotating and fixed frames so q is a vector which is not fixed even in rotating frame even in rotating frame it is changing and obviously it's also changing in the ground frame and we want to uh, find the relation between two rates of change right so uh, what can i write instantaneous uh, value of vector q see so q will have some component along small x axis q will have some component along small y axis and q will have some component along uh, z axis right so it will have three components and let's say we write this q vector as q is equal to qx i cap plus qy j cap plus qz k cap all small subscripts so these are the components of vector q in the uh, rotating frame right here i j k are unit vectors along x y z of the rotating frame okay now i need to differentiate to find the rate of change of vector q i need to differentiate this whole thing with respect to time and uh, now this i am going to tell you a very important distinction so uh, pay careful attention we can differentiate this with respect to time from either rotating frame or from ground frame right what's the difference between the two 
see if you are differentiating this in rotating frame then i j k vectors themselves they are fixed vector so you need not apply product rule while differentiating them if you are taking the time derivative in the rotating frame whereas if you are taking the time derivative of this thing from the ground frame or the capital x capital y capital z frame then realize that i cap j cap and k cap themselves are changing vectors so when you are differentiating qx i cap you need to apply the product rule so qx dot times i cap plus qx times i cap dot that's what we'll have to do right so let's see how do we do we differentiate this so here ij are unit vectors along uh, xyz of the rotating frame so uh, i am deliberately writing subscript o small x small y small z that means i am taking the derivative in the rotating frame right now okay and later on i'll take the uh, derivative of q vector in the uh, the inertial frame or that is capital x uh, frame okay so if i just uh, take uh, i have deliberately used the dot notation for uh, rate of change uh, dot means d by dt right so just for a brief uh, brevity i have just used uh, uh, dot instead of d by dt okay so the rate of change of q vector in the rotating frame o x y z small x small y small z is nothing but q dot x i cap plus q dot y j cap plus q dot z k cap and i'm not differenti differentiating these terms because in rotating frame these i j k are fixed vectors so just a differentiation of this equation gives me equation number 3 okay this is the rate of change of q in the rotating frame however now what about the rate of change of q vector from the uh, inertial frame or the capital x capital y capital z frame so then i need to use the product rule so what is the derivative of first term that is q dot x i cap plus q x times i cap dot okay or d i cap by dt right similarly what's the derivative of the second uh, second term uh, this one so this will be q dot y plus uh, q dot y j cap plus q y times j cap dot so that's what i have written q dot y j cap plus q y j cap dot okay and similarly the derivative of the third term will be q dot z uh, k cap plus q z k cap dot right now uh, i j k are vectors of fixed magnitudes that are all of them are unit vectors in the rotating frame right so just like we had a b vector which had a fixed magnitude in a rotating frame similarly i j k have fixed magnitudes in the rotating frame and their derivatives can be just found using the same uh, formula db by dt was omega cross b so what will be d i cap by dt d i cap by dt by the same logic will be omega cross i cap right so i hope you understood the rate of change of i cap j cap k cap vectors they can be directly related using the equation two so that's what i'm going to do you see so uh, this becomes what see so d i cap by dt is omega cross i cap by the same formula equation 2 similarly d j cap by dt is omega cross j cap and d k cap by dt is omega cross k cap right so now uh, so this this uh, these three terms if you take the summation this becomes what q x times uh, omega cross d i by dt okay similarly q y times omega cross uh, uh, omega omega cross uh, j right this is omega cross j cap here this is omega cross i cap this one will be omega cross j cap and this will be omega cross k cap so if you take omega cross common outside what will be left with this will be uh, q x i cap and this will be q y j cap and this will be q z k cap and there will be omega uh, cross common outside you can take right because everywhere there is an omega cross something omega cross i cap omega cross j cap omega cross k cap so omega cross can be taken outside and uh, inside you you had q x i cap plus q y j cap plus q z k cap which was nothing but q vector itself right so this term these three terms they simply become omega cross q vector right so and this is what this is the rate of change of if you see the first three terms this is same as rate of change of q in the rotating frame right so this part is rate of change of uh, q in the rotating frame right and this is omega cross q vector itself so what is the rate of change uh, from the inertial frame so this is the rate of change of inertial frame that is nothing but rate of change in the rotating frame plus omega cross q vector itself so this is a very important result okay so in general we can say now uh, i i will not all the time call it capital x capital y capital z i'll just use the shorthand notation i'll just call it inertial frame and i'll call this as rotating frame so rate of change of a vector in inertial frame is nothing but its rate of change in the rotating frame plus omega cross the vector itself right 
and of course if uh, in the rotating frame uh, the vector is not changing then of course this will go to zero and this equation will reduce to the same equation as the equation 2 where we had uh, b cap b vector dot was simply omega cross b right but uh, if it is changing uh, in rotating frame then its rate of change in rotating frame needs to add it needs to be added so i hope you understood this equation this equation is uh, most important equation in the entire video and uh, my entire analysis will be based on this equation this is the most important equation in understanding the pseudo forces in rotating frame so i hope equation 8 is clear so if uh, if this is clear then only you should proceed further if not you can try to rewind the video you can use your pen on the paper and try to work out these equations yourself watch them and uh, make sure you are clear with the maths of it and you are on the same page as uh, i am and uh, it's important to keep your motivation to watch the rest of the video and i want you to be highly motivated so that you do get this concept studying with me okay so let me now move further if required you can pause the video you can rewind you can see everything and then come back to this spo spot and move from here uh, move further from here okay so this equation most important equation that is relation between rates of change of any vector in rotating and non rotating frame so this is the rate of change in the ro non rotating frame and this is the rate of change in the rotating frame so these this is how the two are related okay now let's go to the next uh, thing that is relating the plane motion of particles in rotating and translating frames okay so uh, now let us say instead of x y z i have uh, just plane motion so just i have capital x capital y and small x small y uh, these are the frames okay so whatever i have derived for the three dimension that's also applicable for two dimension obviously two dimension is a subset of three dimensions so what will be the velocity of point p let us say r is the position vector of point p okay and how do we find the velocity so you know that velocity is nothing but derivative of the position vector right so now this point p will have some velocity in the rotating frame and it will have some other velocity in the inertial frame so how do we relate the two so according to our formula see the velocity from inertial frame is nothing but velocity as seen from the rotating frame plus omega cross r vector itself right so this is our velocity of point p as seen from the inertial frame rate of change that is velocity so we can say velocity of p is velocity in the rotating frame plus omega cross position vector right okay and this can also be visualized whatever we have got using our standard formula this can also be visualized directly so what how we can visualize this see uh, imagine that under this point there is a point p dash which is fixed with with respect to the rotating frame so if the if the point p dash is fixed in the rotating frame so you know from circular mo motion that the velocity of point p dash will be nothing but omega cross r right but then relative to p dash it also has some velocity uh, that is the velocity in the rotating frame so you just need to add so so the net velocity simply uh, v rot plus uh, v v uh, in the rotating frame plus omega cross r so that's how you can visualize uh, you can relate it to whatever you know already from circular motion okay so we can say okay and uh, suppose uh, the o were not a stationary point so so far we have done the analysis assuming that o is a stationary point but i could observe the motion of p from some other frame where o itself is running okay o itself is translating and there is some other frame from which you are seeing o then what will be the velocity of p so you can simply use the relative velocity formula there because it's translating so no complications so that is velocity of o plus velocity of p as seen from o so you just need to add the velocity of o if you want the velocity of point p from some other frame related to which o itself were moving with some velocity v o okay so i hope you understood this one so that is equation 10 so ninth equation comes when o is stationary and 10th equation we get if o is moving uh, with respect to uh, some other frame so in that frame the velocity becomes simply the velocity of point o plus velocity of the point p as seen from o okay so i hope the equation 10 is clear so so far we have worked out the velocities okay by the way these relations are also true in three dimensions so uh, nothing special about uh, doing it in 2d although some simplification will get uh, for 2d cases that we'll see later on so these equations are generally valid 9th and 10th both equations are generally valid okay in three dimensions also okay now i am interested in finding the accelerations from the uh, non rotating frame okay so uh, what about the acceleration of point p so for acceleration you need to differentiate the 
uh, velocity right so if you want the acceleration from the uh, inertial frame you need to take the derivative of everything in the inertial frame so please remember the derivatives in inertial frame will be different from the uh, derivatives in the rotating frame okay so now to find the acceleration from the ox capital x capital y capital z or non rotating frame we can compute the rates of change of terms in equation 9 okay so what are the uh, terms here so there is omega cross r then there is uh, velocity this is basically velocity as seen from the rotating frame right and i need to find the derivative of all the terms from the ground frame so uh, acceleration from the inertial frame will be derivative of the velocity as seen from rotating frame this derivative needs to be taken from the ground frame so mark my words very carefully we need to find the rate of change of velocity as seen from the rotating frame but that rate of change needs to be calculated from the ground frame and not rotating frame okay or we can say that v rot let us say is the velocity in the rotating frame so we need to find the rate of change of v rot from the ground frame now this can be a bit confusing so let me try to explain to you what i mean by this uh, for example let us say there is a cone and the cone is rotating and i have cut a groove uh, on the cone and rotating uh, in the rotating cone let us say a particle is just moving along the groove with a constant speed so what is the rate of change of velocity uh, of uh, from the ground frame uh, the velocity relative to the cone uh, from the ground frame you see the velocity vector is right now here and from the ground frame this velocity vector relative to the cone will be somewhere over here so these are velocities related to the cone only i have not superposed the velocity due to the rotation of the cone so velocity relative to the cone itself is changing from the ground frame although it is not changing from the rotating frame let me repeat this so there's a rotating cone i have a groove and an ant is moving with constant velocity on the groove let us say so its velocity in the rotating frame is constant even though cone has rotated through some angle the velocity relative to the rotating frame is zero and the rate of change of velocity relative to the cone from the inertial frame is zero although this vector has rotated from the ground frame and this velocity vector is not the net velocity vector from the ground frame this velocity vector is the velocity vector relative to the cone but even this has changed from the ground frame and this is not the velocity relative to the ground frame why because net velocity vector from the ground frame is not this uh, along the velocity along the groove for finding the net velocity from the ground frame you would have to add the rotational effect of the cone to this particle so i hope you understand this is very important if you have not understood it uh, rewind it a little bit maybe slow it down as much as required and try to meditate on what i have said so i want to find out the rate of change of velocity vector as seen from velocity from the rotating frame and its rate of change is being found from the ground frame okay let me repeat once again i am trying to find out the velocity as seen rate of change of velocity as seen from the rotating frame but the rate of change i need to calculate from the ground frame okay so again let me so uh, i just apply the for this term this is very simple so i i am finding the derivative of each of these terms in the ground frame so what do i get for acceleration you see uh, this is very simple so this is product rule you apply so omega cross r dot plus uh, plus uh, uh, omega dot cross r so this term is simply omega dot cross r plus omega cross r dot so simple product rule you can apply and then you need to find the derivative of this r dot oxy with respect to the uh, ground frame or the inertial frame right so again the rate of change of any vector from inertial frame is nothing but rate of change of that vector from the rotating frame plus omega cross that vector itself right so what is the rate of change of r dot from the ground frame r dot oxy from the ground frame so uh, applying the same uh, thing that i derived in the equation 8 so what was that equation 8 let me show you once again this was the equation so rate of change of any vector from ground frame is rate of change from the rotating frame plus omega cross the vector itself right so that's what i am going to do here again so so this rate of change from the ground frame is uh, rate of change of this from the rotating frame that becomes r double dot oxy plus omega cross r dot oxy okay or we can say that this is the acceleration as seen from the rotating frame plus omega cross velocity as seen from the rotating frame so same formula exactly the same formula i put here right so now uh, 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 this uh, this is the derivative of this part and this uh, so this plus this plus derivative of this if you take that 
so that becomes what so this is omega dot is nothing but angular acceleration so that i have written as alpha so this term is alpha cross r then what about this term this is omega cross velocity right the r dot is nothing but velocity from the inertia so i have taken all derivatives from the inertial frame right so r dot is also from inertial frame omega dot is also from inertial frame okay so omega cross r dot that is the omega cross velocity as seen from the ground frame okay and what about the velocity as seen from the ground frame once again i can write this as velocity as seen from the rotating frame plus omega cross r right using the same formula the equation 8 right so this term is nothing but omega cross velocity from inertial frame which is velocity from rotating frame plus omega cross r okay and derivative of this is nothing but this r double dot oxy is nothing but acceleration as seen from the rotating frame plus omega cross velocity as seen from the rotating frame so i hope you understood equation 13 and now we'll do little more sim simplification so if equation 13 is clear then our job is uh, uh, i mean uh, job is easy so make sure you understand equation 13 look at the maths over here what i have done and if required you see whatever i did with the cone there uh, it's important to understand this is the crux okay this is very important and uh, uh, to keep your motivation Uh, if you want you can rewind if you have understood that's fine you can move on with me okay but uh, i very much want that uh, this concept should stay there with you and i worked very hard on this one and uh, i'll be very happy if you do understand this nicely okay so uh, equation 14 uh, okay yeah so we were at equation 14 so uh, yeah uh, equation 13 we have done and now we can do some more simplification you see i can apply distributive law cross product is distributive so this omega cross v rot and here also you have an omega cross v rot you can combine the these two so this becomes twice omega cross v rot right and then there is omega cross omega cross r this term and then uh, this a rot comes as it is over here and alpha cross r comes as it is over here right so this is the this is the relation between acceleration in the inertial frame that is acceleration in the capital x frame uh with the acceleration in the rotating frame these this is how the two accelerations are related okay uh pretty complicated looking things okay and uh, if uh, if instead of uh, having o as a fixed point suppose o were also moving then you remember we had also superposed some velocity vo for the o and if you were to take the derivative of equation 10 instead of equation 9 then you will have to add acceleration of o also into this so if you take the derivative of equation 10 then you need to add the derivative of vo also and that there will be ao also so equation 15 is nothing but same as equation 14 except that here o is considered as a translationally accelerated point and therefore i have also added ao to this okay so now how many terms now this looks uh, <laughs> this looks uh, frightening a little bit but don't worry okay so this is the acceleration of point o with respect to some frame if o were moving alpha cross r this is the same term then twice omega cross v rot same term omega cross omega cross r same term and a rot is same term right now uh, we'll name the terms a little bit so this term twice omega cross v rot this is called the coriolis acceleration we call this as coriolis acceleration and this is centripetal acceleration in two dimension if we simplify this is nothing but centripetal centripetal acceleration coriolis acceleration centripetal acceleration and then this is the acceleration as seen from the rotating frame and this is alpha cross r term and a not okay so in case of plane rotation four term four term can be simplified using vector triple product and will be known as centripetal acceleration you see omega cross omega cross r so vector triple product formula is there that is a cross b cross c is nothing but b times a dot c and minus uh, c times a dot b right now what happens if the entire motion is happening in the plane and omega vector is perpendicular to that plane then omega dot r will be zero okay so if you expand this what will this become according to this back cap formula this is known as back so according to that formula it will become omega times omega dot r and minus r times omega dot omega right according to the same formula of vector triple product but omega dot r will go to zero why because omega vector is perpendicular to the r vector r vector is in the plane and omega vector is perpendicular to the plane so this is simply r times uh, omega dot omega and which is nothing but omega square right so so in case of plane rotation the fourth term of equation 15 that is uh, this term 
it will simply become minus omega square r and we'll call it as centripetal acceleration okay because in plane motion r is perpendicular to omega okay uh, and now equation 15 we can memorize this as by naming different different terms so let's call this as the a naught is uh, a naught is of course a naught and alpha cross r is of course alpha cross r and we call this as a correlus this twice omega cross b root is a correlus omega cross omega cross r is a centrifugal uh, centripetal and a root is the root, uh, acceleration as seen from the rotating frame okay okay now once we have worked out the relation between accelerations in inertial frame and non inertial frame we are ready to uh, understand the uh, pseudo forces in the rotating frames see how do you define the pseudo force see uh, in any frame uh, f equal to ma will not be valid in general unless it's an inertial frame right so in general uh, if in one frame if in inertial frame f equal to ma is holding uh, uh, correct then in another frame of course acceleration will change but real forces are same so if no matter what the frame all the real forces will be same but accelerations appear to be different so that means what newton second law is going to be violated so definition of pseudo forces that you apply some extra force so that f equal to ma again becomes valid and some fictitious forces you have introduced right so from rotating frame the uh, you have to apply some rotate uh, some extra pseudo force and uh, okay and this is the acceleration as seen from the uh, inertial frame a is the uh, acceleration from inertial frame and a root is the acceleration from the rotating frame right so now we shall work in a rotating frame whose angular velocity is omega vector and angular acceleration is let us say uh, alpha in such a frame the only acceleration visible is a root okay so this this is the only term that will be visible in such a frame which is rotating with the uh, omega and alpha right so and uh, now we can multiply this entire equation by mass so what do we get if you multiply equation 16 by mass so you ca can see that mass times acceleration of p from the inertial frame is mass times a naught plus mass times alpha cross r plus 2m times omega cross v root plus m times omega cross omega cross r plus m a root so same equation uh, some boring operation i multiplied whole thing by m okay so now what is going to come out from here you see mass times acceleration of particle is nothing but real force right f real okay and mass times acceleration in the rotating frame should be the resultant of f real and f pseudo right so that means what now f real you can cancel on both sides and to calculate the pseudo force you take other terms on the left hand side and you can solve for the pseudo force so that's what i have done let f be the real force and sp be the pseudo force required in the rotating frame okay then mass times acceleration of particle is the real force that is f vector okay by newton's law in inertial frame and m times a rotational is nothing but f plus pseudo force right so this term is f plus pseudo force so you cancel f on both sides and pseudo force can be calculated by taking all these terms to the left hand side so what are we left with so if you do that uh, so using equations i am calling this as 19 this is 18 and i am substituting this in equation number 17 and rearranging equation 17 so what do i get pseudo force comes out to be minus ma naught minus m alpha cross r minus 2m omega cross v root and minus m times omega cross omega cross r so you see these terms they these these are the same terms and with a negative sign coming on the other side because right hand side pseudo force is there all these terms I have to take to the left hand side so what do i get this is what i get okay minus ma naught minus m alpha cross r minus 2m omega cross v root and minus m times omega cross omega cross r okay now there are four terms in the pseudo force which can be explained as follows they have some names okay so this minus ma naught this is very much familiar you know that whenever there is a translationally accelerated frame you apply a pseudo force opposite to the acceleration of the frame of observation right so this is uh, simple right so this is the usual translational uh, pseudo force right so minus ma naught okay then this term minus m times alpha cross r uh, this we will talk about then uh, the, the next I have talked about this minus 2m omega cross v root okay so remember in this v root is the velocity as seen from the rotating frame okay and this force is called Coriolis force okay this is what we were interested in uh, most interested in this part so here omega is the angular velocity of the rotating frame and v root is the velocity of the object being observed from the rotating frame and this much is the Coriolis force that must be put okay so f Coriolis is minus 2m omega cross v 
and there should be v root over here so let me just write v root v root means velocity as seen from the rotating frame then the third term uh, that is uh, this term okay uh, this term this term is known as euler force all of them have the dimension of force right this term it comes because of the angular acceleration of the rotating frame and this term is known as euler force okay so euler force is minus m times alpha cross r and then the fourth term is this one minus m omega cross omega cross r this term is called centrifugal force right so this is the centrifugal force minus m times omega cross omega cross r and then uh, again for 2d motion you know that omega vector is going to be perpendicular to the r vector and then uh, this will simplify to simply m, m omega square times r vector which you are familiar from your circular motion also so this is your centrifugal force so i hope all the four pseudo forces are clear and we have not only just taken a rotating frame we have also taken a uh, we have taken a frame which is rotating and whose origin is accelerating with an acceleration a not so that kind of frame we have taken and in such a frame we have worked out all the four pseudo forces right so one is due to the translation of the frame and the others uh, this coriolis force euler force and the centrifugal force okay so we have worked out all the pseudo forces so now to make this concrete i'll be presenting two examples two illustrations so that uh, the thing sets in your mind nicely and uh, this concept uh, uh, you grasp this concept uh, in a better manner so i'll just take two illustrations so first i'm taking a simple illustration the illustration is very simple although uh, it it will use all the uh, pseudo forces that we have studied so what's the question here so question is a turntable begins to rotate with constant angular acceleration alpha at the same time an ant begins to move readily outward from its center with a constant acceleration a relative to the turntable okay so relative to the turntable the ant is going straight okay so maybe it's going like this relative to the turntable of course turntable is rotating so uh, sometime so so from the ground frame its uh, path is going to be kind of a spiral but relative to the turntable it's moving along a straight line with an acceleration a relative to the turntable right okay and turntable starts from rest and moves with an angular acceleration alpha okay so now what is given uh, so if uh, the ant begins to slip at a time capital t find the coefficient of friction on the turntable you see uh, from the rotating frame if you see uh, all kinds of pseudo forces will be acting along with the real force in the horizontal plane that is the frictional force and the resultant of all these forces should be providing the required acceleration mass times acceleration as seen from the rotating frame okay so let's analyze this okay so let me draw the free body diagram from the rotating frame so let's say ant is somewhere over here and the small x small y are the axis in the rotating frame and let's say ant was moving all, all the time along the x axis from the rotating frame right so uh, what are the pseudo forces one will be the centrifugal force that will of course act in the radially outward direction r r direction okay what about the euler force so i have taken the angular acceleration like uh, in the clockwise sense so euler force is how much so you know that euler force is minus m times alpha cross r vector okay so try to figure out the direction so alpha is like this so it is going into the page right alpha vector is going into the page and r vector is, is like this so alpha cross r if you see alpha is into the page and r is like this so alpha cross r is downward so then minus m alpha cross r will be obviously upwards because there's a minus sign so euler force will be acting upwards okay now what about the coriolis force so coriolis force is your minus 2m omega cross v as seen in the rotating frame right so once again you see omega vector is into the page why because it's rotating clockwise so omega vector is into the page and v as seen from the rotating frame is in the radially outward direction so once again if you take the cross product of omega vector and the velocity as seen from the rotating frame that omega cross v root comes downwards but there's a minus sign so coriolis force also comes upwards okay so i have shown the directions of all the three pseudo forces centrifugal coriolis and euler and of course uh, the center is fixed so no need to write f trans pseudo okay now uh, i'll just uh, uh, calculate these things quickly so you know that uh, in a t time the translational distance from the center will be half at square and the uh, angular velocity will be alpha t right because omega is equal to omega not plus alpha t okay so uh, so centrifugal force becomes what m omega square r i cap and omega is alpha t right so instead of omega i put alpha t and instead of r i put half at square 
so m times alpha t squared plus half a t square i cap right so this direction is i cap so this is your centrifugal force now euler force is minus m alpha cross r direction i've already shown, shown that it's in j, j cap direction alpha comes as it is and r is half a t square so this is your euler force then Coriolis force is minus 2 m omega cross b root so direction i've already shown upward so i'm just interested in magnitude so 2 m comes as it is omega is alpha t and v root is again a t because v is equal to u plus a t and u was zero so j cap so this is your Coriolis force right and of course real force will be let us say small f is the frictional force so I can say that frictional force plus all these pseudo force they are providing the necessary acceleration so now Newton's second law is valid after applying all these pseudo forces so this should be equal to ma times i cap right the ant is accelerating in this direction so now what I can say f mod so I keep f mod on the left hand side and take everything else on the right hand side so f mod at the verge of slipping the friction should be limiting that is mu mg this should be equal to ma minus uh, f centrifugal uh, minus f coriolis minus f euler all these things go to the right hand side and now i have just taken the i coefficient square plus j coefficient square so this is what you are getting so square of this is uh, square of this magnitude and if you just put uh, these values so this is what you get and now you cancel m throughout uh, this whole thing you cancel m and take the g to the other side so what do you get mu is a by g into under root of this okay so this is our uh, final answer, required answer. Of course, you could have also done this problem from ground frame. So I leave that as a challenge for you. The same problem you can try doing from the ground frame. So what you can do from for doing from the ground frame, you can find the angle covered as a function, theta as a function of time and r as a function of time. And then your i cap and j cap vectors will be fixed from the ground frame, right? And then you differentiate them twice and then you'll be able to do. So that's sufficient hint. You can also do, do this problem from the ground frame but i'm not illustrating because here i'm uh, trying to focus only on the rotating frame and the pseudo forces right so one more illustration this one is from david morin okay so let me uh, read out this challenge so what's the problem a hoop of radius capital r is made to rotate at constant angular speed omega around a diameter as shown so this is a hoop and it's rotating about a vertical diameter like this okay a small bug of mass m walks at constant angular speed omega around the hoop. So there's an ant which is ro rotating like this, okay, with an angular velocity capital omega, right? Let f be the total force that hoop applies to the bug when the bug is at an angle theta. So when the ant is somewhere at an angle theta, the hoop will be applying some force on it. And uh, uh, and the component, one component of the force will be in this plane and one component of that force will be perpendicular to this plane. So what I am interested in, so let F be the total force that who applies to the bug when the bug is at an angle theta shown. Let F perpendicular be the component of F per, that is perpendicular to the plane of the hoop. Find F perpendicular in two ways, ignore gravity in the problem. So what are the two ways? So we can work in the lab frame. Uh, this part I am not doing, I am leaving it as an exercise for you because this is without using the pseudo forces. I am going to solve this problem using the uh, approach in part B that is work in the rotating frame of the hoop at the angle theta find the relevant fictitious forces and take it from there okay so I am going to do it using the approach B I leave at uh, the approach A as an exercise for you okay so let's see what's happening now I am going in the rotating frame of the hoop so uh, I am sitting on the axis and this axis is rotating so I am rotating along with the axis so that the plane of the hoop remains fixed for me from that frame right so what are the forces acting on this bug from that frame so fictitious forces you see there will be a centrifugal force because I am at some distance so this distance is r sin theta right so there will be a centrifugal force and the velocity of the bug as seen from the rotating frame is along the tangent of the circle so there is some v root in this direction omega is uh, of course vertically upward okay and this angle is going to be 90 minus theta right because this is theta so if you draw a vertical this is theta and this angle then becomes 90 degree minus theta right because it's along the tangent okay so the centrifugal force and the other force is the Coriolis force so if you do uh, find the direction of Coriolis force you see omega vector is upwards and v vector is like this so omega cross v is into the page right but your Coriolis force is minus 2 m omega cross v as seen from the rotating frame so obviously that will be coming outside because omega cross v root is inside so negative sign so that becomes so Coriolis force is outside right 
and now I have shown x, y and z uh, axis in the rotating frame. So horizontal is x, vertical is y and z coming out of the page. Okay. So now from the rotating frame I can say that f, centrip uh, f centrifugal plus f coriolis plus f contact. Now F contact is the force that the ant is experiencing due to the normal reaction or maybe friction from the uh, hoop itself. So this is the real force and these are these two are the pseudo forces. And of course there will be no Euler force here because there is no angular acceleration of the frame, right? And this should be equal to mass times acceleration as seen from the rotating frame, right? So now I just need to substitute these things. So centrifugal force you see this distance is uh, R sin theta. So M omega square R sin theta I cap. That's the centrifugal force. Now what about the Coriolis force? So minus 2m omega cross v. So omega is like this, v is like this. So there's a cos theta, right? So sine of 90 minus theta is cos theta. So Coriolis force is 2m omega, uh, capital omega, small omega r cos theta k cap, right? Because v root is nothing but v root is your uh, v root is uh, capital omega into uh, r. So I substituted that. Uh, rather uh, I just want to write like this magnitude so this is omega r right so that this omega is coming from there from the v root so capital omega into r is nothing but v root okay so this is your uh, Coriolis force okay and plus contact force this should be equal to mass times acceleration as seen from the rotating frame so from the rotating frame acceleration is uh, capital omega square r in this direction right so it has some vertical component cos theta vertical and sin theta horizontal in the minus i cap direction so that's what i've uh, written over here this is your contact force right now the question asks me to find the k cap component of the contact force so i this is a vector equation and i am just interested in equating the k cap components right so now we can uh, we want k cap component of the contact force from the above equation just uh, find out the k, k cap just uh, equate the quotients of k cap on both sides and if you get uh, if you so do that you get f perpendicular as uh, minus 2 m omega omega r cos theta k cap. So this is my answer for the perpendicular force. This again you can do this using the first approach also angular momentum approach. Okay. So uh, that brings me to the end of this video and uh, I worked very hard on this one and I tried to explain it as uh, much as I can to the best of my teaching capability. I wanted that uh, all of you are able to get this concept uh, and keep it with you forever. So if required, do watch the entire video again, sit with the pen and paper and do the whole thing with your own hands so that you get confidence in uh, what you have learned. I know that this is fairly complicated stuff, but uh, uh, if, if with a little practice, this will be uh, there with you forever. Okay. So thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope this video was useful for all of you. And if you found my video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord i had given a target for subscriptions for this video but uh, somehow that target was not met uh, but uh, i still i'm still hopeful that with your support i i'm uh, i'll be able to reach uh, big milestones on my channel thanks a lot once again for watching this video and uh, uh, i'll see you in the next one and uh, as always god bless you all thank you